Thank you for joining us today at Discovery Park of America. I'm Katie Jarvis from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. I will be your host for this and other lessons with professors from the University of Tennessee. These lessons are for students in grades six through nine, but they will be of interest to anyone. Today, I'm excited to introduce Mr. David Macbeth, a professor of art at UT Martin. He will be teaching us how to make simple pinched clay bowls and cups while incorporating poetry. So David, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me and thank you and, and welcome to the uh, UT Martin Ceramic Studio. It's glad to have you with me this morning. Awesome. Uh, so I, I start each class each week with a poem because I think that's important and I think it gets us centered. And so I'm going to start this class with a poem. The poem I'm reading this morning is Apple Season by the uh, Minnesota Poet Laureate Joyce Sutphin. The kitchen is sweet with the smell of apples. Big yellow pie apples light in the hand, their skins freckled with stems, knobby, and thick with bark as if the tree could not bear to let the apple go. Baskets of apples circle the back door, fill the porch, cover the kitchen table. My mother and my grandmother are running the apple brigade. My mother, always better with machines, is standing at the apple peeler. My grandmother, more at home with a paring knife, faces her across the breadboard. My mother takes an apple in her hand. She pushes it neatly onto the sharp prongs and turns the handle that turns the apple that swivels the blade, pressed tight against the apple's side and peels the skin away in long curling strips that twist and fall into a bucket on the floor. The apples coming off the peeler are winding staircases, little accordions, slinky toys, jack-in-the-box fruit, until my grandmother's paring knife goes slicing through the rings and they become apple pies, apple cakes, apple crisp. Soon they will be married to butter and live with cinnamon and sugar happily ever after. And again, that's Apple Season by Joyce Sutphin. Thank you. So I stumbled on this concept of making little cups and uh, putting poems on them. A year or so ago, I was invited to be a part of an exhibit uh, incorporating poetry, three-dimensional poetry. And, uh, and so that led me thinking about this. And so I have written a little haiku. Poems, that, that poem by Joy Sutherland is long. We, couldn't, we could probably make enough cups to put all that poem on, on, on cups. But haiku, uh, Japanese uh, poetry style uh, haiku, is perfect for this because it's uh, the first line is five syllables, the second line is seven syllables, and the third line is five syllables. And so I've written a little haiku. You get a, a bonus poem this morning. Oh, good. My little haiku is apples, autumn crisp, grimes golden, liberty, pippin, all so sweet. And so each word of that haiku goes on a poem, and you can see here apples, autumn, crisp and then this is another word another one i have finished this one of the last words in the in the in the poem all and i have other cups here uh that are in the process i'm starting to work on on the pippin cup on, and uh, but let's get let's maybe i'm getting ahead of myself how do we get all of these words on the cup so we have a cup okay but how do we make the cup so how much clay do we need? Well, a lemon. Everybody knows what a lemon is, right? And, and so we need a ball of clay about the size of a lemon. And the clay I'm using is a commercial clay made, uh, uh, sold by Mid-South Ceramics in Nashville. And I have a, I have a typed up uh, handout with links to the poems and to the materials I'm using that, that will be attached to, to the video for you uh, to download as you need it. Uh, the clay is Clay Lady Clay from Mid-South Ceramics, and it's gray right now, but it does fire to this really bright, uh, crisp white. So here's the ball of clay. I just kind of, I grew up in the north, so I always say, make a snowball. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, that, that, that may or may not be a relevant image to you, but make a snowball and, and stick your thumb right inside it. And these are called pinch pots. And way before electricity and, and uh, a lot of other uh, kind of thing, common things of today's age, um, potters didn't have potter's wheels. 
Now, they didn't have electricity, of course, and so they would form their bowls by pinching the clay in their hand. And I just stuck my thumb in there, uh, and then I'm pinching the clay, I'm turning the clay in my hand and pinching it between my fingers. That's why they're called pinch pots. Is now, the clay, when you put pressure, I, yeah. I have a question for you. Is the yes. clay, when we get it, so if we ordered the clay from the Nashville, um, so from the Nashville place, is it already soft like that, or does very it very soft? It comes in. A 50, okay. It comes in a fifty-pound box, two twenty-five-pound bags. Okay. And it's it's all ready to take out of the bag and go. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, good question. If you push in with your thumb, and and I hope you can can see this action, push in with your thumb, you stretch the clay inward and up. Mm -hmm. Press out, and you stretch the clay outward and make a wider bowl. So I'm thinking about cups this morning, not so much bowls. Um, and I'm just holding the clay in my left hand because I'm right-handed and I'm pinching in and getting the shape. And I'm not terribly fussed about it being even at the top. I don't mind the, the unevenness of the top edge, uh, I, but I, I kind of want the weight of the cup to feel good in my hand when I'm using it. So. I want to make sure that all the way around the, the clay walls are, are nice and even. How long have you been um, a potter, I guess, or is that the right uh, word? I <laughs> How long took, have you been doing this? Yeah, I took my first ceramics class. I was a freshman in college in 1979. So I'll let some of you do the math on that <laughs> Do the <one>. math. <laughs> you guys do the math on that one. Um, you just loved it or did you like grow up doing I, stuff like I that? I didn't. I didn't. I, I grew up in a family that appreciated the arts and we went to art museums and I and my mother was a was a, was a school teacher and my father was a uh, research chemist. But they both valued art and we had art in the home and we went to, as I say went to art museums and, and plays and we were very involved in the humanities and I stumbled into this pottery class in college. And I wasn't very good at it, but, but I enjoyed it. So I went to another college and I kept doing that. And finally, I ended up being a great school art teacher. Yeah. And, uh, and then I ended up back in graduate school and just fell in love with it and knew I wanted to do this forever. So this is my 29th year teaching here at UT Martin. Oh, wow. And um, it's, a, it's a great school and a great place to be a, an art professor. So now I, so I didn't say, I get, got sidetracked. My students will tell you I'm easily sidetracked. <laughs> um, but I left when I, I can start another, I left some clay, let me move these guys a little bit. I left some clay, so when I stuck my thumb in there, I left a little bit of clay at the bottom. I didn't push my thumb clear through. I left this little kind of nug of clay at the bottom. Yeah. And that becomes what we call the foot of the cup, okay? And so I like that the, the cups have a foot. It gives them a little bit of uplift and a little bit of posture. And I want to, so now I'm just working to make sure that the outside is pretty smooth. I'm just taking my thumb, my uh, index and middle finger inside the cup, and I'm just taking my thumb and- Does it need to be thin or thick or? It, it's, it's about, uh, a uh, quarter of an inch or th uh, three sixteenths of an inch thick. And and that's not bad there. That's not a bad cup. Okay. And you can see this is about the size I made these. Clay, as, as clay dries, it shrinks. And then uh, as it's fired, it shrinks even more. So you might want to make a cup a little bit bigger than you think you want or a bowl. Um, and... Uh, that's what I was thinking, because I, I have a feeling you'll tell us about the firing and, and all yeah, that. Yeah, a little bit. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's, it's, uh, it's different with each kind of kiln. Um, so I, I don't know if I said in the beginning, but this clay, I did say it's from Mid-South Ceramics, and it's a, it's a clay called earthenware. And earthenware fires uh, at lower temperatures. Uh, and so it, most times that's what uh, uh, public school schools have uh, let small electric kilns if they have a kiln at all. And so this is great for that. Um, and so uh, if we're doing it at home, would we be able to put it in our oven or no, it's it not, it's not, you need to get okay. up to something like uh, 1900 degrees, a little over 1900. Oh, okay. 1900. Wow. That's really hot. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, in, in the world of pottery, it's not, but but in the world of pizza ovens, it is. Right, right. You know? And and, uh, and so this is what we call earthenware, and, and it's it does fire white, and it's great. It, as I said, it fires uh, technically what we call at about cone 04, which is 1,920 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're doing this program at school, uh, you, and you have a kiln, that's wonderful. Uh, if you're doing this program uh, around Martin and you're not, don't have a school or, or a kiln at school, give me a call because we've got kilns here and, and I love to fire pots for other people if I can. Um, okay, so now the cup is shaped. It needs to dry a little bit before the color can be put on. And one of my former students who was an art teacher here in Martin, and, and in fact, I think used to work in, in, teaching pottery at Discovery Park, uh, Amber Gentry, mm -hmm. uh, introduced me to this material, uh, Mako Stroke and Coat. Can I get that a little, is that helpful? We can see it. That's All right, good. And so um, there's a lot of different, Clay Lady, uh, Mitchell Ceramics in Nashville, the, the people who have the Clay Lady clay have uh, a whole line of, of colors uh, and that most of them, from what I know at least, most of them have to be mixed and, and then whatnot. Well, this Mako Stroke and Coat comes right in a bottle, and, and I'm just using a, a dollar store paper uh, plastic plate and, as my palette and squirting some colors out in, in little puddles. And uh, the beauty of this uh, material is that it can go on right now when the, when the pot's still wet and then it all just dries together, and then it just has to be fired one time to that 1900 or so degrees. It can actually be fired harder than that, but it doesn't need to be. Um, and so there's a lot of other products to use, and, and I don't get any kickbacks from Mako for telling, for telling you about them, but <laughs> I think it's a good product. I think it's a good product, and I appreciate Amber uh, cueing me into it. It's perfect for this kind of work. It, a whole range, uh, array of colors, uh, the, the red in the bucket in the box is called hot tamale. Uh, what do we have here? This yellow that I'm using is called sun kissed. There's dandelion and jack o' lantern and orange, orange appeal. And so it's important to use that sort of paint. You, like we couldn't use an acrylic paint. No, we use an acrylic paint, it would burn right off in the, in the uh, firing. Sure so this would. It's a yeah. very special sort of paint that we have to so use. So that's the thing about, oh, about a lot of this is that. Is it specialized materials and specialized things? Let's see, I was going to tell you something important next. I do, I am curious how are, so I see where it says apples, autumn, crisp on your, the okay. one that you've already made. Yes. So do we need to paint the outside first with our pretty colors and then we write the white letter or how does that work? So thank you for refocusing me. <laughs> I've got my, my, my paints here are just, just off camera. And I've got a brush that's already been moistened a little bit. And, uh -huh. and I'm just going to, this isn't quite as dry as I would like it to be, but I'm just going to paint right on there. And the way I did these was just to put a layer on and, and then change brushes and change colors. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too terribly worried about colors blending. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's okay if the brush is dry and just leaves sort of streakiness. Yeah. And it's okay with me if I, I understand maybe in a classroom you wouldn't want your students mixing colors like this quite so much, but, and you don't have to mix them. You could just paint the whole thing a solid, you know, orange color or whatever yeah. you like. I just was, was attempting to get something a little bit, I forgot to put hot tamale out here. Oh no, hot tamale, we need that red. No, I, need, I need that red. <laughs> And so I just, one of the things that's important to know about this, this particular product is that you want to get two good coats. Mm -hmm. So you might need to let it dry a bit and then put a second coat on. Um, it, then, the, the color will be there with just one coat, but it will be shinier, glossier with, with two coats. Okay. And that's why it's important. So I'll, I'll just set this one aside. It's too wet to, to fuss with for now. I've got some here that I, that I painted yesterday, and they're probably actually a little drier than I want, but I've started, what I've done is I've started, one of the Apple brand names is Pippin. Mm -hmm. 
it's not the basketball player, Scotty, but it's an apple. Mm -hmm. and, and so I've started carving through, this is a little bit drier than I want it to be. I'm just going to do a short blast with spray bottle. And I have a very fancy tool. It's a dowel rod that I've sharpened both ends with in a pencil sharpener. So, okay. so this is, except for the, the, the glazing, the process is pretty low tech. You don't need much. These brushes are, they're referenced on the information sheet, the resource sheet, but I got these, I think at Lowe's or at Real King for, you know, no, they're cheap. They're called chip brushes. They're inexpensive. They are great for in the clay studio. And so then I, I have part of the P here. So I, so I just drew the letters on here and then with a dry brush can brush the flakes away oh okay so the so take your finger made, and, pardon me even though you made this yesterday it's still soft enough to where it's still soft and I, I did have to soften it a tiny bit but it's still soft enough okay if you if you are scratching the the letter out and you have uh flecks of clay and glaze there and you use your finger to smear it you'll just smear it back on so that's why the the brush to just mm -hmm to just brush it off. And so for whatever reason, the two letters that I have the most difficult time making as bubble letters, I call those bubble letters, mm -hmm. uh, are E and S. Uh -huh. This is maybe the fifth time I've tried to put an E in Pippin. <laughs> and I looked over my poem and there are almost every word has an E in it. Oh my. have multiple E's in it. So I may not get this E looking super swift and we may just skip on to the end. But that's the, that's the thing here is just to, just to carve that out. Oh, I see it. And then that gray is just the clay underneath that color we painted on, uh -huh. which will turn white like these letters. And is that after we glaze it? After, after it's been fired. Fire it, fire it, okay. So, so these are, this one, when I finish the E and the N, this one's ready to set aside and they have to dry thoroughly, completely dry, a couple of days, unless it's raining like it is outside today. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're put in a kiln and fired and that's about a 24 hour process uh, as well. And then with, because of this material, when they come out of that firing, they're done. Okay. And then, and then they're ready to go. And so that's what makes the, so, Right now, it, it's not as that one that you're working on right now is not as bright as the apple's autumn crisp. But after you kiln it or fire it, fire it. have that bright color. Correct. Okay. So, so <clears throat> I don't know because this is a commercial product. I don't really know what's in it, but essentially glaze, which is what this is becoming, uh -huh. is the the chemicals to make glass with uh -huh. colorants added to it, uh -huh. and then other things to make it matte or shiny or transparent or opaque mm -hmm. uh, and so um, so I'm gonna spray that one more time it's so dry it's just really absorbing and then I'm just going to wish we could I don't know if I can do an end upside down but I'll give it a shot yeah well you just give it a shot we'll see yeah. what happens yeah. so I'm just scratching through that mm -hmm. Look at me, riding upside down. Nice. Am I doing that right? Yeah. So for people who want to do this, they might, um, a resource, maybe they're, you know, they're not in Martin, but they could possibly go to maybe a local college that's in their town or um, just to ask if they have a kiln that could fire sure. for them. Sure, you could ask. You yeah. should ask. In this day and age, um, if universities aren't being helpful, they, they should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> so then I'm just scratching that away. Uh, I've just about gotten used to not blowing dust off with my face mask on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so there you can see how the end has started to, I hope you can see how yeah, the end uh -huh. started to take shape. So then I clean up the E a little bit when I'm off camera. And then this one will be ready to go. So I have Grimes Golden, Grimes uh, Golden, 
Those are ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last line is Pippin, all so sweet. There's, there's so, so sweet. and sweet and all has already been fired. So, so that's, that's how it's all kind of comes together. And then there's that poetry thing. Well, that's great. We have this poem, we have all these cups with this poem on it. Mm -hmm. A year ago, I had the, the privilege of being a presenter at the uh, English department's um, Young Writers Conference. And so I did a similar project to this. And, and then we started rearranging the words in our poem and making new poems and new sentences. Oh, so uh, uh, apples, all, Where's sweet? There's sweet apples. What do we have? Sweet apples. Oh, that says grind. All crisp. I think we we need sweet. What have I got? Grimes. Grimes. Oh, grimes. What did I put sweet? <laughs> Golden. Sweet. Sweet. Pippin. Didn't I have sweet? Sweet. Sweet. Somewhere. Okay. So get rid of autumn. Crisp, sweet apples. Let's I don't put know. all. Let's put all in front of crisp. All, all crisp, crisp. Sweet apples. Sweet apples. And so, if you have a whole room full of students who have done a haiku, and they each have, you know, seventeen syllables. So how we, this turns out to be 10, 10 cups to make my poem. Let's say that they all have between eight and 12 cups to make their poem. You have 10 students in the studio, or if you just have two or three people at home, you've magnified the number of words you have to rearrange. Oh, in, in, the, in the Young Writers Conference, because of the shape of the pots we had that day, we were making vertical sentences. So we were all um, stacking like this, uh -huh. and the words were showing. So oh, we were making vertical cool. sentences coming up this way. Oh, so you have a stack of sentences, and each stack of sent you know, words was the line in the poem. It's just, it, it's a fun way to to play with words. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we could have all, all sweet apples crisp, or apple crisp is a whole other thing. It's the name of an apple brand. It's a, it's the name of a of a delicious dessert. Yeah. Um, that is so neat the way that you incorporate poetry into, you know, the making of these cups and bowls and everything that you do. Um, I do have a question for you now that we're on poetry. Who is your favorite poet? I, there's probably two. Um, I knew you were going to ask me that question and I've been nervous <laughs> about it. I suppose, I suppose my all time favorite poet is the poet uh, Billy Collins. Mm -hmm. He's a former U.S. Poet Laureate, and I wish I had a, one of his poems to share with you this morning. I don't. Um, I, I, as I said, I grew up in a, in a household that was uh, involved in the humanities, and, and we read, and we went to plays and all that sort of thing. Uh, and I did some poetry writing as a high school kid. And then I kind of forgot about it and drifted away from it. And then a few years ago, I was at a workshop down in Jackson, and the workshop presenter just kind of, he was he was working at the Potter's School of Throwing, and he just stopped. And he said, I need to share a poem with you. And he just recited this beautiful poem just off the top of his head. He didn't have notes to look at or anything. And it was a beautiful poem. And he told us who the poet was. And that kind of reinvigorated my passion for poetry. And so um, I started it as a daily project when I was teaching honors, uh, uh, art appreciation. And so coming up with a new poem every day for 15 weeks was a chore. Mm -hmm. But it was it was great. It really got me focused on this, and so it's fun to do. It's fun to learn about new poets. It's it's fun to write poetry. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a great writer to write a poem and work on it. Right, and I love haikus. I think those are so fun because you yeah. have just limited words that you can use. It's not super long or anything, and it's you really have to think about the words that you choose and what you focus on. So you do. I was doing a little bit of research on autumn poems and haiku poems. And I found some on the internet that just didn't look right. They didn't look balanced and right. And so I also, and it's in my resource guide, a there's an online syllable counter. Mm -hmm. So you can type up your poem, your haiku, plug it into the syllabus counter and be sure 
that you, you've kind of the syllables, syll ah, the syllables right. That it's a true haiku. <laughs> yes, yes. So I have one more question for you back to the, back to the pottery. Yes. Why is homemade pottery so important? It, ah, I just picked up a wet pot. Everything that we have here, all, the, all handmade pottery is handmade, right? It, it has the touch of the maker's hands on it. Uh, my thumb pushed this opening and stretched it out, whether it be this kind of handmade pottery or handmade pottery on the wheel, there's, there's everything that is there is put there by the maker. Uh, and so when you, the, you become the consumer of that pot, when you come to my house and you use this to drink a cup of tea out of, or apple juice, but you, you feel where my hands were and you just have that connection. When you uh, have a piece of pottery that you buy from a potter or somehow get from a potter uh, from another part of the country, maybe you're traveling and you go to a potter studio, you have that connection to that place. Uh, and um, you're not going to go on for another half an hour about, about the importance of handmade pottery. It connects us. It centers us on uh, humanity. It connects us with each other. Uh, and all the handmade pots, and I have hundreds and hundreds of handmade pots mm -hmm. in, my, in my home, in my office. They all remind me of the potter, of an experience with the potter, uh, or the event where I, where I uh, got the pot, whatever it is. I have noticed that because I have a special, I actually have a piece of pottery on my desk that I got. I'm originally from Memphis, and so um, I went to one of, the, one of their little arts crafts that they had down mm -hmm. there a couple years ago. And I picked up the, a piece of pottery and it had 901 in it. And oh. that was, you know, especially that's the area code of Memphis. And so that was just a special piece that of home that I brought to, you know, my new home here sure. in uh, Union City. So that's exactly the connection. It, I'm, yeah, that's exactly the connection I'm talking about. Yeah, and that connection. And I know um, several of my family members and friends love the homemade pottery because of the history behind it. And they right. do have that connection. Right. So. It really is. And they're just so, they're all unique. They're like snowflakes. They're all individual. Exactly. They're all individual. They're all, that's, that's, I like that. They're all like snowflakes. Yeah. So, all right, uh, David, thank you so much. Is there anything else you need to share with our viewers before we wrap it up? I, I don't think so. It's been a pleasure visiting with you, all of you. Yeah. <laughs> specifically, Katie, but all, all of you. And uh, my contact is there on this resource sheet. And, and don't hesitate to, to reach out to me as well if there's any questions or uh, any thoughts. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Mr. Macbeth. And thank you for our viewers to, for joining us today. We look forward to continuing our mission here at Discovery Park, which is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. For more educational resources, visit our website at discoveryparkofamerica.com slash education. Thank you. Thank you, Katie.